Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Before starting the video, I would like to thank those who are helping me by donating on the website. Really appreciate the support you guys are showing. This keeps me motivated. I have launched the membership plan with this channel. If you want to show your support, you can join the membership by clicking the join link below this video. Let's start the video now. Today in this video, we will make a wave player using STM32, which should be able to play the wave files from the USB. The peripherals that we will be using today are, Inter IC Sound, also known as I2S, an I2C peripheral, FAT file system, USB host, and a discovery board of course. Let's take a look at the schematics of the board first. Here we have CS43L22IC, to process the audio in the board. If you have the same, you are good to go for this tutorial. Here you can see, the two pins for the I2C, and four pins for the I2S3 are connected to this IC, and we can enable them in the Cube MX. We will cover them all but first let's create a new project in Cube IDE. I am using STM32 F411 Discovery Board. Give some name to the project, and click Finish. Let's clear the default pins. First things first, I am selecting the external crystal for the clock. Now we are going to configure all the peripherals we need. Enable the I2C first. Pins PB6 and PB7 are configured as the I2C pins. But as you can see in the schematics, pins PB6 and PB9 are being used as the I2C pins, so we need to change the data pin from PB7 to PB9. You can do this by pressing the control button, and then click on the pin PB7, and it will show you the alternate pin for that. I2C is done, now enable the I2S in half duplex mode. As you can see here, Three pins got selected and they are the data pin, the clock, and the word select. According to this schematic, we need to have the master clock at PC7. Let's enable that. Also the clock should be the PC10, but we have here is PB12. So we will set the PC10 as the I2S clock, and as you can see PB12 is no longer set. Other two pins are configured properly, so let's leave them as it is. You can change the audio frequency here. Although it does not matter, since the code will be capable of changing these frequencies based on the frequency of the audio. Let's enable the DMA. Circular mode, use FIFO, and data width is 16 bits so use the half word at least. So we are done with the I2S setup also. Let's go to the USB setup now. Enable the host mode since we will be reading the data from the USB, and also enable the VBUS. As you can see in the schematic, in order to enable the power to the VBUS, we must activate the enable bit, and to do so, the pin PC0 must be low. So I am setting PC0 as the output and by default it will be low. 
In the USB host, select the class as Mass Storage class. I will leave everything to default here. In the platform setting, we must select our pin to drive the V-Bus. I am also going to use this button, so that I can control the wave player, like pause, resume, next, previous etc. I am selecting it as an external interrupt pin. Don't forget to enable the external interrupt in GPIO setup. And now the final setup is for the FAT file system. Enable the USB disk, since we are using USB here. I am going to leave everything as it is, just enable the use of long file names. That's all for the setup part. Let's set the clock now. I have 8 MHz external crystal, and the system will run at 96 MHz. Click save to generate the project. First of all we need to include some libraries that we're going to use in this project. Copy the C files in the source directory, and header files in the include directory. You can get these files from the link in the description. Audio link to C basically links the audio to the I2C. Audio.c contains the audio-related functions, for example, initialization of the driver, audio play, pause, resume, or stop functions. Then we have CS43L22.c file. I got this from the examples provided by ST, and I haven't modified it at all. This is the driver for the audio codec. Next is the file handling.c file. Here it have a function to parse the audio, which basically helps us identify the WAV files, and get the index of the file. And we also have functions to mount and unmount the USB device. At last we have waveplayer.c file. We will be using the audio functions from this particular file. Here we have audio player start to start the player. Then process function processes all the audio files. And stop function to stop the player. Make sure you set the volume here. The range is from 0 to 100. So let's start by including the waveplayer.h and file handling.h files. We need to check the USB state in our main function, so make sure that you declare it as an extern variable.
We also need to check for the audio playback states. So declare it as extern2. Now we will write our program in the while loop, and make sure you write after the USB host process. We will first check the USB state. If the USB is ready for communication, we have to mount the USB. I forgot to do that, but I will add in a while. Now start the audio player, I am using the index 0. Here index basically indicates the index of the file that you want to play first. 0 means the first file. Now after we have started the player, we need to process the audio, and that must be kept in a while loop. So I will create a variable to check if the player has been stopped or not. If the player is running, the audio will process. The parameter here is, if you want the loop the files. I am setting it as true, so after the last audio file, the first one will start playing. Now we will check the audio state. There are various audio states, like play, pause, resume, next, previous, etc. Here we are interested in the stop state. If the audio state is stop, the variable will be set to 1, and the audio will not process anymore. Let's build it. We have no errors. Here I have four audio files in my USB, and all of them are in the WAV format. I haven't connected the USB yet. Let's debug the program first. Like I said I forgot to mount the USB. Let's do it now. So if the USB is ready, we will mount the USB first before doing any audio related operations. Let's debug again. I am going to put a breakpoint at the audio start. Let's run it now. I am going to connect the USB, and as soon as I did, it hit the breakpoint. Let's go inside this function to see what's happening. Here you can see it have already selected a file that it's going to read. The file has been opened to read. And now we will read the file. As you can see here, it only read the 44 bits. 
Basically these first 44 bits contains various information about the file. Like the file size, sample rate, number of channels, etc. Next, the player will initialize at the same sample rate as the audio have. Let's play it. You heard the music. So the player works well. Now I am going to implement the button to this player. To do so, I need the external interrupt callback function. If the interrupt was triggered from the pin 0, we will change the audio state. Here we can select whatever we want the button to do. Like next, previous, pause, resume etc. I am choosing the next state, so the next track will play if I press the button. Let's build and run the code. So you saw whenever I pressed the button, the next track was playing, and since there were only 4 tracks and the loop was set true, the first track play after the fourth one. I am going to change the button to act as a pause and a resume button. Here we will check if the audio is in the play state, and if it is, then we will change the state to pause. Let's check the audio process function, to see what happens during different audio states. You can see here, when the audio state is pause, it will pause the audio, and the state will be set to wait. And similarly if we resume the audio, then the audio state will be set to play. So if we want to check for the pause state, we should actually check if the audio state is wait. And if it is, then the audio will resume. Let's build it and flash. You saw when I pressed the button, the music was paused and then played again. You can add more buttons to this player, and program them according to the options in the audio state. This is it for this video. I hope you understood it. You can download the code from the link in the description. All the library files are inside the zip file. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.